We're just very happy with the house, and we we're hoping to get the basement finished to add some space. All interior walls this way will come down, but I may be able to keep this. We were starting to have some concerns about the renovation. There were some things that looked kind of sloppy. If the outside looks bad, what have they done with the electrical? What have they done with the plumbing? The water's going in the ground, and it's just going to come back up as a terrible odor. We are expecting a baby, and with the outlet sparking and that kind of thing, I got really worried that the house isn't safe. Oh, yeah, baby. Mike Holmes. On the money. Decided now, we got it. Take it all down. My husband loves you. Me too. Unacceptable. Mm -hmm. God, I love my job. <laughs> Tom and Rebecca bought a house, brand new home. They have a baby on the way, so the idea was to do a basement and make it really usable for a future family. They brought in about five, six different contractors, and they were all in the ballpark of around 15000 and one of them was actually a lot cheaper. This contractor we ended up choosing stood out for us because um, he seemed quite professional. He put it in, in writing. His quote was very detailed, and he gave us a guarantee. And he returned our calls, and he seemed to have no problem answering questions, so he really seemed to stand out as the most professional. I understand why the homeowners will, you know, see five, six different contractors, get approximately the same price, and now they're judging at who's come in their door as to how, who wins the job. I understand it, but they've got to check them out. If they don't check them out, they're just pulling at straws. Tom. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Rebecca. Hi, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Come on in. Come on in. I hear we have some basement problems. We yeah. do. So the only time we saw him was in the morning. He would come and uh, he had the access code for the house, so he would let himself in and he would let these three workers in. What is wrong with this picture? Contractor comes in, as kind as can be, sells the job, starts the work, brings in other people. He's barely there, and all these other people look like students. So this, this is supposed to be finished. I hate this right away. <laughs> and we didn't really know uh, there was major problems because they put the drywall up and everything looked okay. It's only when they started doing the finish, when they started doing the plaster of the wall, that we could see what a horrible job the, the finish was. This is the laundry room. And this is the furniture room, room, which was unfinished. Oh my. One day I was home sick and they didn't know I was home and I heard music in the basement so I just came down to see how things were going. Um, came down and they were standing on our couch with music blasting, playing the air guitar. And We actually didn't want a laundry room here. We wanted this to be an office or a guest room but the contractor said we had to have it here because this is where it already existed. I guess he didn't want to get a permit. No, no. Did you have a permit? No, we didn't have a permit. One day we heard a vacuum running and we thought, oh, that's good. They must be tidying up down there. A few days later, we realized it was our vacuum, our home vacuum, that they'd gone into our second floor, into our closet, got our vacuum, and was using our vacuum to vacuum up cement and drywall. So they burned the motor out of the vacuum. Is there any problems in this room? We're trying not to use the washer and dryer because we have some concerns because in other rooms in the house, when we plug things in, it sparks and sometimes the power cuts out. As well, they took our ladder and then since they didn't have a ladder, they pulled our couch out and used our couch as a ladder so it's covered in cement and paint. We have no power the dryer see this wonderful tile job that was done in the baseboard I mean look at the gap here yes so. I guess he didn't know how to level floors this is disgusting I'm seeing the walls wavy like crazy this is just indicative of the whole basement though the finish is just is horrible then they went into our closet and got some guest towels and ripped them up to make rags to wipe up grout this is the uh, bathroom this is the bathroom <laughs> they had to crack the floor to uh, move the, the shower and the the toilet at a small distance and that tap doesn't go right to the wall over there but he said that's how it's supposed to be oh my god this is poor we can tell that the electrical was not done to code. That's got to be clipped. It should have been drilled up higher here and mm -hmm. clipped near the box, meaning just a staple mm -hmm. holding the wire, stationary, not like this. And this door doesn't close either. For oh, some that reason. doesn't surprise me. It's 14 <laughs> feet off the floor, too. Well, a credit card was activated from our home, which was not activated by either of us. Somebody activated that card, and it wasn't the homeowners. Somebody went out and bought a computer, and it wasn't the homeowners. Somebody slipped that card back. What we also noticed from the filing cabinet is that all the paperwork related to the renovation has gone missing. How did they just go missing? They just disappeared? And why did they just disappear? If I had to guess, I'd say someone was trying to get rid of any paper trail, that they were here and that they were responsible for the renovation. Little does this contractor know, the homeowners have the original documents. These were just photocopies. Well, we see an awful lot of receptacles. Yes. I think I... people complain they don't get enough. Yeah. Look it... at this. Every single one of them are poorly, poorly done. That's a fine door installed over there. Half of the doors here are used, and you can notice here that the, the uh, doorknobs are actually 10 pins on These here. are the ones we upgraded to pay for. Well, it swings in. <laughs> it swings both ways, actually. With the price being so low, it doesn't surprise me to see used doors, used door handles, and totally installed incorrectly. They're never going to work. They're going to fall off their jams, but they're paying for a new basement.
with used products. I let the door go and it moves on its own. That means the door's high and level. Visually, I'm used to going into seeing jobs that are not that bad. This one here, right from the beginning, I can tell we're taking it all down and doing it again. My main hope is just to know that it's safe and that we're going to be able to enjoy the basement knowing that it's not a fire hazard and that we don't need to be worried about our safety or the baby. I have to complain we got this basement. You do know that. What were we going to say? This is terrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. Surprise? No, it's not a surprise. You see it wrong in front of you? It's definitely wrong underneath it. Oh my God, you know, I haven't even seen another room yet, and I don't like this. This is not good. This is, uh... We are uh, walking into a basement that was finished by a uh, contractor that states to be one of the best out there. Wait till you see this. Uh, there was no permits, obviously. We've just got all our permits and all our stamps here, what they want. Normally, we usually go into the house and we have to open up to see what's wrong. Well, this one is right in front of your face, so there's not going to be open up. It's going to be taken down. We're put on the door, Jeff. See insulation? I do see insulation and paper barriers. So just stand paper. This is called a clean out for your stack. What this does is if you ever have a blockage, you open this up, you run a snake down it. What didn't we see? Access to the clean out. They drywalled over it. So when a plumber comes in and he's got to find this clean out, where the hell is it? Leave all this up. Just okay. in the drywall now, now to see all the static here we can use. The sink is tied into the bathtub line. Yeah, whatever the builder gives you are up in three piece. They have a sink on one side yeah. and then a bathtub on the other. So there's a trap in the ground now and there's a trap above ground. So you have water in this trap, water in that trap, and air in between. So when you go to drain the sink now, you have a fluctuation of uh, pressure in between the two traps and the water will never drain properly. The water will come back up, drain down, come back up, drain down. When we start around steel post columns, we want to make sure that they're within the wall. Because what do we see here? It was drive all over that, right? None of this is any good. All interior walls this way will come down, but I may be able to keep this. We'll leave the plastic up for now, just in case we get all the drywall down, keep the insulation clean, then we'll investigate whether or not we want to keep this up. 40 minutes. Not bad. Looks like we're going home early. Ah! This is how you want to do a wall. But that's insane. Number one, we did not do this. This is a heat line. That was tied into upstairs, that was removed. There's a duct that leads upstairs somewhere that no longer has heat going to there, and this was closed in. Number two, we have central vacuum that is not even hooked up to anything, not even capped off. So imagine turning on the central vac, and all it's doing is sucking up air from this point, which gives you no draw from the area you're using. Number three, we have a totally illegal junction, not only close, not even close to being done right. All loose wires, we can see, I just hit that, and it actually just shut off the light in there. This was hidden, not a way to stud the wall. Never mind the electrical, never mind how many locations we found that they could have moved the bathroom to. Why does everybody choose to put it where the ductwork is? On all the electrical, do you see any staples anywhere? Do you see any staples at all? Mark, have you found any? No, I haven't found one. And this is code, as a matter of fact, it is code B, what is it? 12 inches That's what I away thought. from the box, yeah. Why? Because in case somebody pulls this by accident, exactly. it doesn't create a short. Yeah, it's a disaster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. It's here. You're only allowed twelve per circuit. You gotta see this. An extension cord buried in the wall. There's all kinds of cables up there. What the hell's up there? Well, Mark thinks that might be the stove. It is the, no, it's the fireplace. It is? Yeah. yeah. There's the fireplace right there. So we have an extension cord. At least you can get to it from the fireplace. That's still not the way we do things. When I was talking to the homeowner, they were turning on switches upstairs and lights were flickering everywhere, so they've really tampered with the electrical here. We're going to have to determine what they've done. It'll be a lot easier when we get everything down. But why do you think that would happen? Why would lights flicker? Uh, loose neutral. Well, we've seen it in the washroom. Right. The connection was loose. It could be the same thing in the switch. They probably tapped off of the An basement. Upstairs line. Yes. In terms of the breaker tripping, they double fed the circuit somewhere. So while the switch is on, once they turn on that other switch, it blows the circuit, which is also popping their main. So it's a pretty big dead short. We have an illegal junction point over the doorway. We have another illegal junction point here, another point here. And you're going to have to break open upstairs to get to the line to run a new line where? The wreck? Yeah. The problem being is the two junction points here were the lines upstairs in the wall, the receptacles. So in order to eliminate this so we can drywall it, we don't have to have an access panel to get to it, we've got to now go upstairs, break the wall, pull out the line, run a whole new line to the panel, 
or at least to an area that is accessible, such as the furnace room. Okay, do what you gotta do. Try not to do too much damage. All right, we'll fix it. Shut it. Well, at least they didn't cement it down. I made it easy for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave us the garbage. And this just drives me insane. You're gonna love this. We don't have to investigate. We have to take it down. No, man. Not again. I have a piece of lumber in my hand, and I just decided to read it. Someone's name, I won't mention the name, as a matter of fact, I'll cover it out. Built first basement ever. So they decided to sign the wood that states this is their first job ever. Here's a very, very good reason not to allow anybody in your house that does not know what they're doing. We have a shut-off tap that leads to the outside that was concealed. Here's the worst part. Follow this over and what do we find? Plumbing that used to be down a staple to the floor joists. These floor joists are 2 by 8 12 inch on center, which I like. Here's the problem. They took the plumbing so they could drywall the ceiling and notch all the floor joists all the way down. Do you know what this does? This now gives us a problem with structure. Notch all the way down. Who cares, right? You're not going to see it. We're going to put up drywall. I'm surprised I didn't put a screw in one of these uh, pipes because it's right there. Not to mention we have pipes just doing what? Banging every time you turn them on. But they cut structure to run them. No still gasket. So we see someone in here that's been in the business for years, but no new common sense. I love my axe. No new techniques. Whole lot of hiding things, though. Is it on sale, gasket? If it's not, take it out. Well, I have samples, but you know what? I like to see that better. Shot it. Oh, I wouldn't leave it there. Nice. That's really cute. We'll see where they broke the floor. When we get it cleaned up, we'll break the floor and follow the route and see what they did. Yep. That plumbing is wonderful. You mentioned I'm in the shower in there, filling up the ground underneath it all the time. I wonder what that smell is. It's funny when people say to me, my bathroom stinks, Mike. You know, we really don't know. We do, we do the little checks, but we actually have to gut it to find out why. That's a great point right there because the water's going in the ground and it's just going to come back up as a terrible odor. Well, I almost don't know where to start, but we might as well start with the whole point that... Uh, Visually, when I first walked in here, we could see many things wrong right from the beginning, right? So we decided to gut it without even playing with it. But let me show you what I did find. Let's start with a few. Okay. We'll start with the sand and work our way through. This is underneath your bowl window. So no insulation in the ends, which totally drives me crazy. We had water on the wall that once we took everything down, we had water on the wall. Oh, wow. Piece of improper insulation oh. under that window that they took out. Pipes to the outside. This is to your garage. The shut off, totally closed in. This shower tray was not even attached. Did this almost looked like a, a testing ground for them. Was, was our basement mm -hmm. doing like plumbing and possibly electrical. We disconnected the duct lines of the second floor to put in a bulkhead right here. Here's where the bulkhead was. Oh. Right. This was in their way. So okay. they broke it and closed it all in. Right. We had hidden junction points in the ceiling, probably seven junction points electrically that you are not allowed mm -hmm. to do. In the contract, he specified that he wouldn't tap into any old electrical lines. He would create all new lines. And he specified he wouldn't hire any subcontractors. He put things such as, um, he would put a special GFI outlet in the bathroom. Just numerous things that he put in writing but didn't fulfill. You had a clean out in the floor over here. They tiled over it. Oh. Right. You see that gap across the top mm -hmm. there? No insulation that will create a condensation zone, which creates what? Which More. We just knew from what we saw on the outside that looked um, absolutely horrible that what was going to be underneath was probably going to be worse. So what do we see? We see nothing but crap. And then we find this wonderful piece of lumber here that reads, first basement ever. <laughs> so they decided to sign the lumber and put down it was their first basement ever. <laughs> Yeah. Every possible worst scenario I've imagined, I've just been so scared about what a horrible job was done down here. So when I came down here and saw that it had been gutted and it was gone, I felt such relief to know that we could start from scratch and it would be safe. We'll fix your heating. We will properly insulate this. We'll properly finish this, bring it back and show you what it should look like. Great. It looks 100% better right now. <laughs> I have to agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a deal, right? 15 grand worth of crap down here. <laughs> this is wrong. Everything possibly wrong is wrong. Let's keep playing. We'll leave this all open. The inside is not finished. Right. Yeah. It's part of the, like, the mechanical yeah, room. This, this actually becomes the mechanical room. Right. And laundry room. That's right. This would be the perfect room for the office area. Honestly. Mm -hmm. So if we turn this into an office, and we leave open concept here, which now makes me want to take this wall down because it's, it's in my way. It's visually it's in my way. We now incorporate all this open concept as the room and the bathroom's at the end. We only have to come through the floor here Bring, a, bring all our plumbing at the end back here. Right. Right? Okay, so you want the toilet over here. Well, you have two choices. You come off this wall with the toilet, or you come off this wall with the toilet. Surprise me. Either way. All right. No toilet at all. Do not get the toilet. Surprise. Laundry room. 
bathroom at the end. Now this is open. Office? Office. Sold. The idea behind this is to show the best possible way of insulating a basement. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay one inch foam, not styrofoam, but foam on the floor. We are going to caulk every joint, we're going to tuck tape every joint, we're going to leave a quarter inch expansion around the room, and then we are going to spray foam that expansion. When we spray foam that expansion, we're going to put up our wall, which is two inch foam. It is lap joint, so they overlap each other. So the whole idea is that the whole outside wall and the floor will have foam on it. So it stops anything to do with moisture buildup. We'll put the 300 dabs on the wall, stick up our piece, make sure we have that little bit in the corner. Later we'll spray, spray foam it. Okay. We definitely want to spray foam this area now. We're going to come right up to the floor joists. Just to give you an example of how we get moisture in our walls, based on a theory of using a bat insulation with a 6 mil vapor barrier, if you have one pinhole in that plastic, that pinhole can fill a cup of water in a season. If you're going to make it airtight, you better make it airtight. Now we're going to use a house wrap tape on every single joint, including the inside corners. Even though we have a spray sealant, even though we have caulking, it's a double protection. We must think about, like the outside of our foundation wall, a single layer of foundation coating is not enough. A secondary membrane is always better. We're going to put down 5 eighths tongue and groove plywood and we're going to tap cone it to the floor. We have a thermal break on the floor, which really helps insulation. Okay, so in other words, it'll stop the cool from coming through. Like Mike was saying, he was very curious about opening up this floor to see what these guys did on the plumbing. My first assumption was that he took it off the three-piece over here. What the guy actually did was tie into the main drain. This was the toilet. No vent on the toilet. He used some kind of coupling here. No glue. Nothing tight. See this over here? He used the wrong glue on the main. You can see this yellow glue. It's like um, ABS glue for uh, the black pipe. This is white pipe, a PVC pipe. You need the right amount of right type of glue. Nope, not glued. He's got a union trap here, which was underneath the kitchen sink, okay? Everybody thinks they could do plumbing. You know, you just, whatever, you tie into this drain, tie into that drain, put some water pipe. But then there's always problems after like a year. You know, it's a big thing. It's going to cost you a fortune to get a, a good plumber to come back in and fix things. Cover it up, concrete it over, keep going with the styrofoam. Let's do it. I guarantee everything for a year. Are they back here fixing this? No. What the hell is a guarantee if you don't stand up to it? It's in writing. It's verbal. It's there. Everything's guaranteed. Yes. Well, what a difference with having all the foam in place. You can actually hear how it's deadening the sound, so it's also soundproofing. I like it. I like it a lot. It's probably a third more in insulation cost, but when you look at the long run and what you get out of it, you're going to get your money back cost in the next 10 years. Don't think about money. Think about spending money the right way. That valve there, do you want that there for the access? And that's something the builders never think of, is that when people finish the basement, uh, the wall that comes up comes all the way up to this point. Right. They put in an access panel here and you can't get to it. How about if we put that valve which I'd like to do is put it underneath the kitchen sink and then just have a plate full of help. So you turn your hose move off underneath the kitchen sink. I like that. Please. I like that. No Very problem. good. Okay. The reason why I'm using this and so why I'm liking this Ipex way more is just the convenience of using it, the less fittings it uses. Like, I don't probably already from this line to there would have like three or four 90s on it, and now I have none. So the flow is going to be a lot better. And it goes up a lot quicker too. I love the product. When you look at price comparison just to buy the product, it's more expensive than copper. But what you have to consider is the ease of installation. So when it comes to plumbing a brand new home, it would take less time to do the plumbing. So in other words, you save on the labor. So in the same run, it would be equal. Dan tells me you're playing with plumbing. Yes. What are you doing? I am hooking up the hose bib that goes outside. Okay, you feel good about it? Yes, I did some plumbing yesterday. It's got the bib out. When I look at this, I still see dirt on yeah. it, right? Oh, so okay. you sand that like crazy. Okay. The cleaner it is, it grabs the solder just like that, okay? And here's the trick I want to show you. The outside edges, okay? I want those clean. Okay. Now, some people are going to say, Mike, you're doing it too much. I say no, because once my plumbing's done, I never come back. It never leaks. And I've never had a complaint in all my life.
it takes about seven last night. We knew Joe was coming uh, to start running his wires for his plugs and everything for the bathrooms, the lights, everything. So we're just trying to stay ahead of him a bit, and uh, that's what we're doing now. We're trying to finish off the washroom so he can at least start in a corner and work his way out. We've got a couple more walls to build, and uh, we're there. Two pot lights, uh, receptacles. Uh, more than likely, this will be a TV wall, I'm going to assume, so we'll set up for that later with cable. I'm going to keep a line through just, just in case can, for the future. I can do that for you, too. We are going to have the laundry room in this location here, so we're going to need everything to do with the laundry setup and go over with Dan how we're going to do this. I believe the dryer's right here. The washing machine is there. That way we can vent directly up and out. And the other thing I'll do is what I'll do is I'll keep the lighting on one circuit and plugged on another circuit. I like that. If you blow the receptacle, you have light. Exactly. This is a big mistake when they tie the lights in the receptacles. You blow the light and you're in the dark. Yeah. Plus, also, if you plug something in that's drawing a lot, your lights aren't going to dim. Right. There's the bay window that steps out approximately two feet outside the foundation wall. Now, normal minimum cold requirement is to put bat insulation in that zone. I'm in absolute disagreement with this. The cold air is going to come from the ground, because this is about this high off the ground, and just, just continue to go through there. Anything that overhangs should be spray foam. In comparison to just using bat insulation here, this will be about $100 more. It'll be the best 100 bucks you ever spend. Very good. I think you're gonna like it. The only guarantee that people have out there is to find the right contractor to do the job. That's a guarantee. Now, I thought I'd bring in Digby just to uh, really show about why we want to use the best products. I have the opportunity now to show uh, the best insulation, the best drywall. We're going to use the mold resistant and the importance of using a proper ventilation system in a home. What we want to be concerned about is just this washroom at this point. How are we going to properly ventilate this washroom? We're going to size our fan to give us the proper number of air change to take care of the moisture and the odor within the space. A lot of people don't know when they're finished having a shower in the bathroom, what do they do? They turn out the light, they shut off the fan. We should actually run that fan for about 20 minutes after the shower, correct? That's right. That's the importance of the control part of the system. Watch the screw too, because you appear to be in the same line as your stud. All right, so if you cover that up, you won't go home. Just careful. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll check it. I'm watching you from afar. Okay. That's not true. That one's dead on. This is way out. You're totally right. Oh, I can see it. So, like I said, I'm watching. I mean, this is how we teach, right? I'm watching and, you know, make, give up the pointers you do it. And once you put it in, you'll see for yourself. And then talk, and talk. Okay. Uh, do you waste an overflow? We'll put it in permanent. Okay. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you, sir. Good job. I am so against using metal in a home, but when it comes to bulkheads, it's much better, it's easier, and now I'm into that. I'm that I like. Metal bulkheads, I'm fine with. Exterior metal studs, I'm totally against. It's a cold zone, and as long as we have a cold zone that can possibly have warm air, in our insulation system, we've stopped that. We give a thermal break against the foundation. You can't insulate any better than this. But as the old-fashioned to stud and put in bat insulation, we don't have that proper backing behind the studding of insulation or air stoppage, we're going to have that warm, meets cool, creating moisture, hitting the studs, and within two to five years, you will see where every single screw is. So in the basement, we don't put metal studs in the basement. Not on exterior walls. Not on exterior walls. Well, as you can see, we've laminated or sistered. You can say it two different ways. You sister the joist in or you laminate it. It's gone over the steel beam and we brought it out to strengthen this area that was cut out. But every time we have to fix something, it causes another issue. I wanted pot lights in here and we can't get the pot lights I wanted in here. And they can do a retrofit. The tightest spot in the basement where I picked. Best spot for the hose, but a tight spot to work. Be real careful soldering with this plastic here. Because if you light this plastic on fire, you're not even going to see a flame. You're just going to see it start going away. But it's actually on fire melting. If I put my torch like this for a second, it'll take about well, 10 seconds for this whole thing to be gone and the house to be on fire. And maybe I'm dead too. The fire stop will be on all the bulkheads. Right where any time a fire can come up that wall, and we have to create the fire stop here. So this right. must be filled with Ruxel as well. One, two, every, every one of them. Okay. You know he's going to insulate. He's got his shirt buttoned right up to his neck. He's got his <laughs> sleeves taped to his arm. I don't want insulation under my shirt. I love it. I'm recommended. Perfect. You know, you stand here and you look down and they're on the money. Drive the line, be precise on it as much as possible. The cleaner we are to it, the better. And let's also take a measurement of these areas and do not hit it. Always keep visual of what's there, plumbing, electrical, where you can't put a screw. The drywall is honestly paperless. 
it's a different type of product on the outside and on the inside. And because there's nothing in this type of drywall that mold will feed off of. This is why we want to use it, especially in a basement. We should always think ahead. How many times do I go into a basement and we have mold galore? Because mold will feed off of paper, any, any live product. Uh, we're going to use the 90 on this because mold does not eat that. We'll finish this off with a compound skim coat. Just a flare coat is where we'll take everything and flare everything right out with a compound because it's a nice finished coat where this is a much rougher coat. So our last skim coat will be a compound. Everything else will be a sandable 90. The numbers mean it dries in 90 minutes, 45, 45 minutes, 20, 20 minutes. So if you're using a sandable 20, you better work quick because it will harden on you like you won't believe. If you just use compound, which you're going to see nine times out of ten in new homes and in any type of renovation because it's a pre-mix, they don't have to waste time on it. The sandable 90 is an expensive product, but it's very hard. And the benefits to it is mold doesn't eat it. It doesn't like it, but it loves compounds. So if you fill all your outside corners and you have any issues at all with moisture, that's where the mold's going to be. When we're laying floor tile, especially a tile that's 12 by 12, 16 by 16, or anything like that, we use a half inch square notch trowel, half inch wide by half inch deep. That gives us play within the floor because no floor is 100% true, and it gives you a little bit of adjustment on the tile to create a true surface is what we're looking for. Not so much level, but true. So we'll just make sure that we push it into place. Notice I'm trying to keep it nice and thick, and I'm just pushing it into the holes. And we want to bring it out and stand that up almost as much as possible. Nice, clean, right across. Now, the first thing I'm going to look at is on these tiles is do I have a grain in the tile? Actually, I do. So let's go to, to the manufacturer who's already created a grid for us. You see the back of that? Yeah. So we're going to lay all our tile in the same grid pattern. I'm going to touch my first tile very gently, okay? I'm going to let it fall. I'm going to slightly pull this away. Now we see no tiles are true to each other. You see how we have a little bit of a bigger tile here than we do here? So let's make sure we have that play. I'm going to pull this one back down because of the kickboard. I'm not worried about it, right? I want to have that extra space to play with. No two tiles are the same size. By touching the other tile and pulling it back, I don't squeeze up the thin set that's in between it and have to clean that. Okay. The least amount you can do without oozing that up in the center, the better. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, you can actually adjust this to hit just below the roller or on the roller. So what I'm doing is spraying just below the roller so I don't get any overspray hitting the ceiling. Because you're not dipping in the tray, I would say you're probably, you're half in your time. No back rolling with this either, which is great. I'm really liking this system. How are we doing, gentlemen? Good. Nothing like having a small basement with 140 people in here, eh? Yep. It looks good. So we have carpet coming in in an hour. a ton of time to play. Push it in, scrab it around, push it in. And you won't believe how hard it is on the wrist. And the whole object is to make sure that grout touches the floor beneath the tile. Now some guys will grout the top of it. I don't like that at all, okay? What we're gonna do is we paint it down to it, I will beat that with silicone. You grout the top of that, it will crack. The floor's not gonna move, but the walls will. All inside corners should be silicone. Did you find it hard on your forearm? Yes. <laughs> Just finding all the little imperfections at this point right now. This product I love, Drydex, is just, we'll use this for wood fill, we'll use it for drywall repairs. You see little pinholes, you see little divots, especially now the lights are in, we're gonna start seeing things. You just quickly do it, and 15 minutes, send it, paint it. Painters, are we done? No, halfway. Okay, I'm just gonna have to stop. Let's get these guys on the carpet. See right here, I just put a tape under the carpet. It is a tape with wax and the iron up to 450 degrees. Now it's gonna melt it and it's gonna join the two carpets together. I'm feeling really good here. This has been a, a good day. Uh, the guys worked till about nine last night to make sure that this was not gonna be an issue and it's not. You know, for me right now, it's 325. Two, three hours max, we're done clean up and we'll give it back to them.
just making a custom uh, double door unit to access underneath the stairs, a little storage area. They don't make doors uh, that are 13 and 7 eighths by 38, so I made a couple out of uh, three quarter inch MDF here, and we'll just got a piano hinge that I'm gonna put here, and uh, a couple magnetic latches, and that way they can store, have some storage underneath the step, which is always nice. I'm really fussy with the caulking. I had said to everybody, let me do the caulking. I've done so much caulking in my life. Now, if we leave just a grout in this corner, it will crack. So we're gonna use an almond silicone at this point. And here's the trick from tile to wall. I wipe my finger and drive it directly up as far as I can reach. Stop. Here's the trick, is to go both ways. Because by going both ways, it makes it equal on the grout joint. And already the appearance is 10 times better, isn't it? This looks really good. This is open concept. I'm gonna go get them. This company claims to specialize in basements. I think the thing that scares me the most is, from what I've seen, I'd hate to see the other ones they've done and the ones they're about to do. Already, I don't. Already, already, I'm already downstairs yet. Oh my god! I can't believe it's. I can't believe it's the same basement. <laughs> Just have it looking this. Oh my god! I'm stunned. Wow, this is great. So we're no longer cramped oh. in this area with four doors. This is. This crazy. is what opens it up. And it's the way it should be when you come down the stairs. This looks great. Oh, oh. it's behind door number one. My God! Wow. Oh, this looks this, this looks amazing. This, this, is, this is your office. Looks pretty good. This, this, is, is, this actually looks so much bigger than it did before. Yeah, this looks so, huge. Just, yeah. Just so, so you know, little things that we did do, okay, was make sure that you have a smoke detector and carbon monoxide oh, wow. on. And so you know, it is linked to every other one in the house. If this one oh, goes wow. off, they go off. Everything's wrong, electrical, plumbing, structure. Everything here was wrong. And the worst part was, it was right in front of your eyes on the finishing. It was that bad. <sighs> okay. I'm blown away. So your office is comfortable? This office is, is great. Okay. You know the only problem with this whole thing is we might not see each other that much because I might be coming down here. <laughs> <laughs> or I will. We'll be fighting so for we'll, space. We'll to fight for some of the space. And it's your laundry room. Oh, oh, great. We did not finish this area. And on purpose. It's not because I was tired. It was the whole point is that if you ever have to fish phone lines, wires, cable lines, this is the room to go from side to side, yeah. right through the bulkhead to the panel. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. Why finish the room when it is the utility yeah, room? Yeah, exactly. Sure. sure. How do I know if they're good? Go see the work. Go talk to the people they worked for before. Ask them questions. Did he start on time? Did he finish on time? Was he courteous? Was he clean? Did he charge more money at the end of the job that you did not expect? Wow. wow. So just to start off with, you know that from the beginning, we had gutted this, right? We knew it from the beginning. It was not even a factor that we were going to investigate. It was coming down. Yeah. And we noticed that we had duct lines that were dismembered. One, two locations. So you would have been awful cold in the winter oh upstairs. Gosh. We did start with your floor. We have one inch foam. Wow. Okay. Each and every joint has been tuck taped and spray foamed around the perimeter. Yep. And then we put down five eighths of an inch tongue and groove ply with tap con to the floor. Yep. So now we have a thermal break on the floor, which makes this floor warm. Okay. Oh yes, very, very walls. Two inch foam, right to the outside wall. Glue to it, right to the outside wall. Mm -hmm. Tuck tape on the joints, spray foam on all the perimeters. Every single piece of drywall down here is mold resistant and water resistant. Oh wow, that's amazing. As much as I say educate yourself, you can't learn everything and you can't know everything. But one thing you can do is pay attention to what's happening. It's so bright in here too. Well, it's just the right amount of pot lights yeah. and the right way of using the bulkhead and using the lighting within the bulkhead. And it just, it works for me. It's what I yep. see. Yep. I come down and I say, this is what I can do with it. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank <laughs> you. Oh. oh my God. Oh, wow. Oh, this is, this is awesome. Wow. This, this is awesome. This is the nicest bathroom in our house. We were expecting something great and it was this. even better than we could have thought, really. I can't, I can't even believe it. I've never seen a basement like this. It's perfect. It's just, you look around, everything is perfection. This is stunning. We chose to use the area properly. This gives you a big bathroom, yep. toilets in behind the door, which is you want to see, right? Right. Amazing. The top, again, is designed for no mold. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I love using these. We have ceramic to give it a nice edge all the way around. That's, that's very nice. 
They may even come up with a nice little board, okay. the idea is to bring it up even and join in the center. Not only do we have the foam on the floor and the plywood, we also use the water protection system underneath the tile. Yeah. What this is going to do is not only make it watertight, but give the proper subfloor underneath the tile. So nothing's ever going to crack, nothing's ever going to be a, an issue here. We have a super air cleaning system in here. And this really? is the little things that you need to know about to wow. actually remove the air. This is stunning. Let's just take some more look at it. Wow. The length? You still have a long area, don't you? It's a huge area. I love it. Yeah. If the other guy's job had looked a quarter as nice as this, I would have been happy. This is amazing. This is amazing. I gave you the area with cable and receptacle. Two pot lights on their own switch right there. Okay? Oh, wow. wow. The idea is, that, to me, a nice little sitting area and your entertainment's right here. Mm -hmm. No, but there's all the like, attention to detail that was completely missed. Like the, Even the simple things were completely screwed up before. Yeah. And all of these so, sort of very um, small but important uh, points are, are given a lot of attention here. So it's, it's, yeah. it's really nice. This is, I can't even thank you enough. This is yeah. a million times more than I could ever imagine. Thank you. Oh, very no, <laughs> thank you. Thank my you so absolute, much. My thank you. Okay, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> I'll give you this. Oh I, was, I was hoping for something that I would like, but I love it. It's just above and beyond. Awesome job. Thank you. This is the worst job I've ever seen. I had him. Can you tell who I am? Damon. <laughs> Man. Wake up. Some of that. How are you? It's like you're gonna fall. Where's Sean? Right here, buddy. Don't worry. I'm always, I'm always ready. I got your back. I got a ticket. Thank you very much.